All right, well, I'm just going to uh, get us started, kick things off. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Zinnia Willits, and I am the executive director of the Southeastern Museums Conference. I've been in this role for about four years, and prior to that, I was at the Gibbs Museum of Art in Charleston, South Carolina, and I worked in um, collections and operations. I was always very involved with SEMC, and I was always aware of the Jekyll Island Management Institute. Um, it was something that I, I wanted to do, and then I saw it was an eight-day program, and I, I could never, it was hard to block the time to do that. But one of the things that I realized now being on the other side and having had the extreme privilege to be the administrator of the program um, through its transition, and I'm going to tell you all about it, um, what's happened over the last few years, um, it's really important if you are able to make the time and, and find the funding for this professional development experience, it can be a game changer for your career. Um, and so what we're here to do today is to answer questions, to just bring some reality to the experience. We have a really great panel of individuals who have all been through the Jekyll Island Management Institute and some have even been instructors at it. So we're going to go through our steps and then open it up for questions. And this is a pretty casual um, format, as you can see. Feel free to keep your cameras on or off, whatever you're comfortable with, um, but we will all be here. And so to get us started, I'm going to turn it over to Heather Nowak, who is SCMC's program committee program coordinator, and who is also a co-administrator with me of the Jekyll Island Management Institute. Thank you, Zinnia. Um, as Zinnia said, please make the time to look in, into Jimmy. It's a, it's a wonderful program and um, we hope you will apply. So thank you for joining us to uh, for today's program. Um, as Zinnia said, my name is Heather Nowak. Um, and I'll quickly share a few housekeeping items before we get started. If you need closed captioning, it is available. Simply click the CC button in your Zoom screen and enable the auto transcription feature. You can also download a full transcript of the program by clicking more and then choose captions and then view full transcript. So as Zinnia mentioned, um, the program will be recorded and shared. So if you miss anything, um, you'll have access to it um, as we get it shared. So. Um, I also want to take the time to remind you about a couple of programs coming up next uh, month that you'll want to uh, be sure to check out. Uh, we'll have our Launchpad series in partnership with the Association of Academic Museums and Galleries. And we'll also have a follow-up program on the collection storage uh, program we had with the Patterson Pope team. So be on the lookout for that information forthcoming. You don't want to miss these professional development opportunities. Um, for today's program, uh, we encourage you to introduce yourself in the chat, share in the chat. Um, as Zinnia mentioned, we'll open up the floor for questions, so feel free to ask them in person or through the chat so we can address them. Um, but again, this will be very casual and um, we look forward to hearing from you. So it's my pleasure to begin today's program, turning it back over to Zinnia. And um, so Zinnia, why don't you get us started by giving us uh, an overview of the Jekyll Island Management Institute and how it's designed. Okay. Okay. Can everyone hear me? Or I can't see myself, so okay, I can see Heather. So she's she's nodding yes. Um, I'm going to try not to take up too much time with this, but I I just wanted to do kind of a brief overview of Jimmy. And again, it's the Jekyll Island Management Institute. You will hear it referred to as Jimmy a million times over the course of this program and probably going forward. Um, Jimmy is a program that has been part of the Southeastern Museums Conference for 20 plus years now, and we are super excited to see it move into the next iteration of where we're going next with it. Um, what I've tried to do with the, you know, it's, it's a loose PowerPoint, but it's to kind of give you a visual representation. When we were talking on the program before everyone came on, it's like, well, if I was thinking about applying to Jimmy, what would I want to know at this point? And we're going to answer all those questions, but I also think it's helpful to be able to see what the experience might look like. 
Um, so first of all, just a little bit of history about the Jekyll Island Management Institute. Um, it was started 20 years ago. I think the first, it was first called Jumpstart. And the whole idea behind it was to create a professional development, almost like a museum boot camp for people who were either new to the field or who found themselves working in a museum with very little museum training. And, and that happens all the time. People come from different industries into our field. It happened certainly a lot during COVID as people were moving jobs around. Um, they may have a degree in history or in art, but hadn't necessarily been um, trained in, in different museum operations from education to development to um, collections management operation of a museum facility so all the things and so the original idea was well let's let's get together some professionals who are working in the field right now who can share what they do over the course of an in-person eight-day program honestly the reason that we're on Jekyll Island and now the program has become synonymous with this location one of the original founders uh, had a house on Jekyll Island and had all kinds of amazing contacts on the island and was able to work a situation where SEMC could get space to hold this program for free and and do all kinds of things that is really helpful to keep the cost of running a program like this down. Um, honestly, I'll show you some pictures. Jekyll Island, if you have never been there, is an amazing place and it adds somewhat of a, of a you know, even a retreat-like experience to the program. Um, as I mentioned, the curriculum of the program was really designed to give a general overview of museum operations. So it's not a deep dive into any aspect of running a museum. You're not going to come away from this program knowing everything there is to know about collections management. But you will come away with two or three best practices that if you find yourself having to manage your institution's collection, you would at least have a foundation of where to start. Um, backing up, because of course I got ahead of myself with the history, the Jekyll Island Management Institute, again, was, has always been run over eight days in January on Jekyll Island. Um, for There were several founders of the program, but for a majority of it, Martha Battle Jackson, who was with North Carolina Historic Sites and John Lancaster co-ran co the program together very successfully. They have graduated over, gosh, I think we're almost up to 400 alumni over the course of this 20 year program. Um, and year after year, people would gather on Jekyll Island. All of the instructors were volunteer um, and would, would give of their time and their experience to continue this, this cohort based training. Um, fast forward to 2020, which was the 20th anniversary of the Jekyll Island Management Institute. It was able to run in January of 2020. That was, of course, right on the edge of big changes for all of us. Um, but that was that was the last sort of previous iteration of the Jekyll Island Management Institute. Pandemic happened. All of our in-person programs were shut down, put on pause. A few other things happened in 2020. Um, the two longtime administrators of the program were both on the edge of retirement of their own careers and were ready to pass the baton um, for Jimmy leadership. And even within SEMC, there was a transition this year as Susan Perry, who was the longtime executive director, um, retired and I took over this role. So <laughs> there was a lot going on in 2020. We, as a, a council of the Southeastern Museums, um, conference decided to put everything on hold and we decided it was also a good time to do a thorough evaluation of the Jekyll Island Management Institute as we prepared to relaunch it post-pandemic. Everybody agreed that this is a really important program um, and we just wanted to look at the curriculum, the needs of 21st century museum professionals and make the adjustments necessary to move it into its next 20-year phase. So we took that time, um, all sorts of interviews and working groups with alumni and previous instructors and those working in the field currently to really strengthen the curriculum and make the adjustments necessary to go forward. 
Um, what you're seeing in this image is the the Jimmy class of 2023, which was the relaunch of the program. We had 18 individuals from all across the Southeast um, and Washington, D.C. and elsewhere. That was at their final, after the final banquet, after the end of, of this very long program. And many of them will be speaking on the call later today about their experience. So with that being said, um, this one, when we were looking at the reboot of, of the Jekyll Island Management Institute for 2023, we worked with an instructional designer named Allison Leitner, who is with Smithsonian Enterprises, and she has worked on some of SEMC's other in-person programs, including our Leadership Institute. Um, and this is what we came up with in terms of a curriculum. It's, it's really an eight-day, a tour of a museum giving all of the cohort members basic best practices in both visitor facing operations and behind the scenes operations. So we were looking at exhibit design, curation, interpretation, community engagement. We have since added accessibility um, and operations into the curriculum. And in terms of behind the scenes, there's also development, fundraising, communications, leadership, um, human resources and budgeting, everybody's favorite topics, but you might find yourself in having to deal with a, a budget, either um, departmental or organizational, and to have some basic knowledge of that is really important. And then, of course, collections management. Um, ethics is in there. We, we've now just sort of morphed that into leadership in general because ethics should be baked into everything that we are doing within the museum. But this was this was the the concept behind the relaunch. It really wasn't that different from the previous curriculum. It was also just more directed at the the needs of current museum professionals. Prior to the pandemic, um, diversity, equity, accessibility, and inclusion was its own session. In the new iteration of Jimmy, aspects of DEAI are discussed within each one of these sessions um, because it is something that is part of museum work in every single department. So that's that was sort of the concept behind this. Um, this is on the website. I'm not going to spend too much time here, but this is a little bit of what the, the Jimmy draft schedule looks like for 2025. So I encourage you to go onto the website, look at this a little bit closer. Um, these are, it's a, the cohort who are here will tell you it's a long day. Um, it's a lot of information that you are given, and it's over the course of eight days on Jekyll. So one of the differences in 2025, we actually do give you a free day um, after four days of intense work. Um, we've tried to build in additional breaks during the day for all different types of learning styles, um, you know, and we can talk more about that in detail, but people are encouraged to get up and move around. And I think in 2025, this isn't necessarily different from the way it was before, but Jekyll Island has really rich resources across the island. And so we've tried to utilize what is there and the professional staff who are on the island and to integrate the island more into the program in terms of some of its interpretive um interpretive concepts and trails and museums. So again, this is, you know, not something that your mind is going to adjust to in this three minutes of me talking about it, but I would encourage you to, to check it out on the website um, to see what, what a day looks like. Um, those of you who have been to an SEMC in the last few years are probably familiar to our annual meeting, are probably familiar with the um, digital platform feed loop. This is what we use to build the schedule and the curriculum and all of the cohort members will have access to feed loop and we'll be able to read about each of the sessions that they're going to attend and read more about the instructors and what the learning outcomes are for each session um, and just just get more background. This is just more of a, a platform that we use to organize all of the information. So Jekyll Island, Georgia, I mean, that's a, a really uh, beautiful aerial, aerial view. Um, it is, you can see where it is on the map. 
uh, I didn't I didn't get a sense of how many people on the call were in this. I think most people are in the southeast region. If you're not, that is perfectly fine too. Um, Jekyll is easily drivable too, depending on where you are. There's also major, more major airports in Jacksonville. Brunswick has an airport, which is the closest airport to Jekyll. Um, but then there's also opportunities to fly into Savannah or Jacksonville and, and make your way to Jekyll. So details that can be um, discussed more, but should be considered in terms of travel of getting to the island. Um, I will say in January, it can be 75 degrees on Jekyll or it can be 55. Um, regardless, it's still a beautiful setting um, and it's it's a pretty unique place. So this is Villa Ospo. This is one of the properties that the Jekyll Island Authority has uh, allows the Southeastern Museums Conference to use for this program. Um, it is one of their historic properties. They use it a lot for rental space for different events and groups coming in. But that's that's where the daily sessions will be. This is <laughs> this is a room where you will spend a lot of time. Um, and again, if you've been through the program before, this will be very familiar to you. I don't think the space has changed much um, in many years of running the program. This was the first day of the program in 2023. That's Sean Halifax, who was doing a really terrific session on interpretation. He got us kicked off. Um, but this is a pretty good idea of, of what things look like. We try and, and do round tables to encourage discussion. We ask people to sit at different tables each day to continue to get to use to meet your cohort. Um, there's plenty of opportunities to get up, move around, go outside. There's snacks and coffee all day long. <laughs> snacks are a big part of Jimmy. Um, you know, there's there's a, a few challenges here and there with this room and, and light coming in, but Heather and I will figure all of that out <laughs> going forward. 2023 was our first time being administrators of this program, so we learned a lot as well, um, just about everything. Um, these are just a, a couple images from um, the 2023 cohort, cohort utilizing resources on the island that we have added into the schedule. Um, on the left is an image out of the Wanderer Trail, which is um, something that you should look up. It's an important aspect of, of Jekyll Island's history and their interpretive panels are new. There's been lots of different groups who are working on the Wanderer Trail. So we actually kicked off the program with a day of not only having the cohort meet each other, but also learning about the island. So we actually take you through the island to all the different parts and so that there's a, a familiarity with where the cohort will be for that week. Um, in the middle, that was Taylor. He was one of our cohort members who actually lives, I think he lives in Brunswick, but he works on the island. He's a preservationist. And this was one of our lunch and learns in one of the historic properties that was very close to Villa Ospo. And so he, he brought the group over to talk about the preservation work that was being done. Um, so I'll speed it up more now because I know I'm certain I'm going over my time. Jekyll Island also has a wonderful museum called Mosaic. We do integrate um, the staff from Mosaic into the program to, as another site visit, a lunch and learn, just to talk about some of the different reinterpretation they have done of their spaces and um, elements of their collection over the, the past few years. So just more effort to, to really get people involved with what's going on in the island. Um, the Hampton Inn is where the cohort stays. The SEMC has a negotiated hotel rate with the Hampton Inn. It's about a five minute drive from the hotel to Villa Ospo, which is just on a slightly different part of the island. There's daily breakfast at the hotel and they were kind enough to um, shuttle our group back and forth twice a day to <laughs> Villa Ospo for those, you know, if you have a car and you want to drive over there, that's fine too. But this was just the way that we started the morning. Um, the kind people who at this hotel also gave us different spaces. And um, as you look at the schedule, there are meals that do come with this program. And so we were able to do a couple group dinners at the hotel on various nights. 
Um, you know, so just to kind of round this out, why do Jimmy professional development? This is at its very core, a professional development program to, to build your skills. Um, there's a lot of group work. There is, like I said, an overview of so many different aspects of working in a museum, development, education, community engagement, collections, there's a session on disaster preparedness, um, leadership, budgeting, HR. It's a lot, but it is foundational and it can only strengthen, even, even if you're already doing all of those things, to have um, kind of a refresh of current best practices in all areas of museum management is important, I think. Um, you know, again, cohort-based learning, I am a huge fan of this. Bringing groups of people together who are coming from different sizes and types of museums um, to work together to, to form a professional bond, a friendship bond. <laughs> That's Keith Flesher um, and Olivia Helmer, they were, doing a, I think that was the digital marketing session and they had to create a social media reel or some such using a bunch of silly props. But it's, again, it is working, it is working with your peers and building your network at the same time. Um, again, building your network, I would also say you're building friendships. Uh, this 2023 cohort is, was particularly tight. This was their last after the final, um, banquet. You can just tell from the pictures that they enjoyed their time together and continue to stay in touch. Um, Jimmy is a unique experience. And once I stop talking, everybody who is on this call will tell you that for the reboot of Jimmy, we do provide lunch every single day for the cohort. And the weather was so nice, they were able to eat outside every day. Now that is if, if you need to go make phone calls or do something else, or you just need kind of a break from the group, that is totally fine too. But the, this was an option. And I think a lot of funny conversations happened over lunch each day. And again, that all goes back to the lasting memories um, that are part and parcel of this program, professional development, but it is also um, building social connections and, and, having really creating a bond with a group of people going through a unique experience in the middle is the Jimmy 2023 group text, which, you know, is pretty active a lot. Um, and the one on the top left is one of my, my favorite pictures ever of just saying goodbye. Um, there's also, you know, the instructors, we just went through the instructor selection and we're finalizing all of that now, but these are individuals who um, want to teach in the program and who have the experience and the interest in building relationships with anybody who is coming to this this program. Um, and so with that, I will just sort of end this part of it that Jimmy is also an opportunity to gain some perspective. Um, if you're new in your career, it is perhaps perspective on where you want to go. If you're mid-career and you're in one particular area of the museum, maybe it's perspective on what you want to do next, but it is it is a, a great opportunity and a very beautiful setting. I mean, I can't tell you how many sunset pictures I took. There's also something about an island in the winter that is just um, pretty amazing. So with that, I am going to stop my screen share and turn it over to Heather to get the rest of the conversation going. Awesome. Thank you for that. So now I want to get some unique perspectives from those who have attended Jimmy. So um, I'm going to turn it over to them. Um, and so when I turn it over to you, just introduce yourselves, tell us, um, you know, when you were at Jimmy and then just give us your unique perspective. Like what was Jimmy like and what did it mean to you for those, you know, who are questioning, is this for me? Just tell them about the program and what it's meant to you. So Adrian, we'll start with you. No pressure. Wonderful. Well, good to see everyone this afternoon. Uh, my name is Adrian Nearday and I'm the director of the North Carolina African American Heritage Commission. I'm based here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, in terms of my unique perspective um, and what the program meant for me. So Jimmy was one of those programs that I had known about for years. It was kind of on my professional bucket list. Um, a lot of folks who I've worked with in the past or 
who have kind of admired where they've gone in the field. This was something that they had done. And it was one of those like, ooh, I want to do that too. I want to get that experience. And I think for me, it hit at like basically the most ideal time. Um, so while I was in Jimmy, I was the associate director, but I had already known that it wasn't public yet that our current director was going to be leaving and that I was very likely going to be asked to be interim. So I had always been someone who was interested in leadership. I very quietly in grad school was like, oh, I want to be the director. I, I want to do this. But I had had various professional experiences that were really challenging and had had um, supervisors and folks who were not encouraging of me being in leadership. So it was one of those like I, I had a, I had some confidence issues and I had some question of like, gosh, could can I do this? Is this something that I'm even capable of? So I would say for me, the biggest part of it was was building confidence and also building kind of relationship and connection and, you know, showing myself it's like, gosh, I do know a lot of this. Yeah, there are some gaps. There are some things like, you know, HR and some of the budget pieces. It's like nobody's ever bothered to teach me this before, but it's something that I can learn and that I can have connections to folks who I know I can reach out to in the future and also have materials to look back at. Um, but I think also, too, I, I work in a very, very small division within North Carolina Department of Natural and Cultural Resources that can feel really isolating sometimes. So I really appreciated being in a cohort model of being kind of on the same page of a whole bunch of people of like, okay, we're all new here. And we're all going to be learning a bunch of um, content together and, you know, know that, oh, the issues and the things that I have back at home are not dissimilar from a lot of things that my colleagues in the field have experienced. And like, this is a place that we we can engage and we can talk it out. Awesome. Thank you, Adrian. All right, Scotty, let's go to you. Hello, I'm Scotty Almany. I'm the um, Deputy Director of Operations and Project Management at the Taubman Museum of Art in Roanoke, Virginia. Um, and at the time I was in Jimmy, I was in the same cohort as Adrian and Lisa um, in early 2023. Um, at the time, I worked at the Birthplace of Country Music Museum in Bristol, Virginia. Um, but, you know, hearing Adrian talk about it, my my situation or, you know, motivation and thoughts of Jimmy at the time were very similar. I mean, it had been something that was on my radar for a long time and something I knew that I eventually wanted to um, experience. And, uh, you know, I'd been involved with SEMC for a while at that point uh, in the program committee and gotten to know Zinnia really well. And, um you know, it's funny, Adrian, because you're like, it couldn't have happened at a better time. And I feel the same way, but it was such a different time for me. I mean, I was 45 at the time, um, you know, and uh, if I'd gone earlier, I don't know that I would have gotten the same uh, same experience or gotten the same out of it. But uh, for me, confidence was a thing. Um, I had been at the museum where I was for over nine years and uh, kind of, I feel like, I guess, I always refer to it as I'd kind of run out of runway, um, you know, and I'd kind of hit a wall and didn't really see um, advancement there or anything. Um, and, you know, I thought that I knew um, <laughs> the, the museum world and um, I just kind of needed, you know, that, that experience to um, gain some confidence and, you know, prove to myself that, you know, I, I was ready to move on, I think. Um, and just the perspective, you know, in your slides, any a perspective is like really a huge part of, of what, what I got there. Um, you know, just, uh, you are in a situation and an experience with people um, learning together at all different levels of your career. And it's such a comprehensive um, program as well, you know, like you're studying every aspect. Um, so yeah, it happened at a really good time for me. And I, you know, I, I think of it for myself as like, it kind of kicked off this 
crazy transitional year um, for me, you know, or, you know, I was at Jimmy in January, came back and by uh, the end of April was in a new job in a new town. Um, I moved, um, you know, uh, into a bigger position, a leadership position, um, you know, at a larger institution and, yeah, it was just a, a whirlwind, but in, in the best way possible. Thanks, Scotty. I appreciate that. All right, Lisa, All right. let's go to you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lisa Fields. I'm the Director of Finance and Museum Operations at the Carlos Museum at the Emory Campus in Atlanta, Georgia. And um, I'm a little different than the other uh, my other cohorts partners, as I had zero museum experience when I came to my museum. Um, I started off as um, I was in the army for eight years, and then I was an executive assistant and then a, a, a business manager in the finance world. So I came to the museum for my finance and HR experience, not my museum experience. So um, after being here some years, um, one of my co-workers told me about Jimmy and said, this would be a great opportunity for you because I, I wanted to learn more about the museum. So um, just from this, the way that the program is set up, you are learning every single thing. You know, you're not gonna come out as um, this, you know, a curator, but you, you know, you're gonna have a lot of experience about it. Uh, what do they like? Um, you're gonna learn a lot about a, a little about a lot. This is a better way to put it. And so um, one of my, my coworkers can tell you that when I came back, because I'm a, I'm a very introverted person, I'm quiet. And when I came back, I was doing cartwheels. I was so excited about all that I had learned and the um, relationships that I had with my cohort. And we have every six weeks or so, we still get on Zoom calls to catch up and you know, find out some people have had children, some people have had um, many of us. And, and we jokingly, but not really say, if you want to get promoted, go to Jimmy, because I can say at least six people have been promoted to director level or similar um, um, roles. And so just by learning so much, when I came back, the first thing that was put in my, my lab was, um, Oh, you learned about accreditation? Well, guess what? We're about to do our reaccreditation. So you are going to lead, you know, the team on this. And we just turned ours in um, in July. And I was able to contact our um, instructor who taught us accreditation and, you know, just to get some feedback from her and use her as a resource. So the things that you learn here, um, you, you're going to have friendships for the rest of your life. That's really awesome. Thank you, Lisa. I think we may have lost Nancy. Um... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if she goes, comes back on. She's um, she's in North Carolina and there was some pretty significant flooding outside her house. But Nancy Fields, um, she, well, hopefully she will come back on. She was in the Jimmy class of 2018, I think, 2018. I think so. Mm -hmm. um, and then she actually came back as an instructor last year or in 2023, by the way, and, and I, I get confused, but we offer Jimmy every other year. Um, so we're going to do it in 2025, then it'll be offered again in 2027. And that's more just a capacity thing for SEMC staff. And we have another a leadership institute that we also offer. Um, but Nancy is actually, she will be teaching again in the 2025 um, instructor cohort. So I guess that's our first instructor <laughs> announcement. Um, but anyway, we'll just see if she's able to come back on. Yeah. And I was just going to give her the opportunity to, you know, kind of talk about the perspective from an instructor, you know, from a cohort member to an instructor. Um, but we'll see if she comes back on. But for the time being, um, let's just jump into um, just kind of how you felt about the learning environment. Like, you know, we talked about, you know, we have daily classes. We do, you know, have time for breaks. But like when Adrian, Scotty and Lisa, when you were going through the program, did you just feel like, 
oh, I, I don't have time to check in with family or, you know, I'm, I'm tied to this room all day long and I, I feel like I didn't get to experience much else. So just kind of talk about the learning environment and just how you kind of navigated the day and did you have time to break away to do the things that you needed to do? Oh, here's Nancy. Let's see. Um, let's see if she'll... And by the way, when y'all answer that question, whatever you say is fine because I am yes. continuing. I am continuing. You know, we're always we love feedback. Um, continued, so that's yeah, good. and and we take that feedback and and use it for you know the next iteration of the program. So feedback is major. So Nancy, uh, why don't we go, go back to you <laughs> before we jump into the next question? Uh, Nancy, introduce yourself and tell us your unique perspective because you've also been a cohort member and now an instructor. So, so tell us about it. Yes, thank you. I'm so sorry. We just had a power surge here. So and we got you. pretty hard by the, you know, we got a lot of flooding from the hurricane. So it's just our infrastructure is a little precarious right now. And it's also why I have less than a professional background going on right now. I am working from home today. But um, I think the biggest thing for me is um, I kind of want to go back a little bit earlier in 20, I think it was 2012, when SEMC was um, in Colonial Williamsburg was my first kind of engagement. Um, with SEMC and I was out in Oklahoma and kind of already knew that I, you know, eventually wanted to make a transition back to North Carolina. And um, to help get there, I, I applied for an award and I won it. I think it was um, sort of mid-career. I, I can't remember what the, that's terrible. I can't remember what the award was at the moment, but um, it's been quite the past couple of days. But, you know, the biggest thing was how genuine and warm everyone was. And I just felt like a sense of community immediately with SEMC. And um, I knew that, uh, in fact, I think our museum, even out in Oklahoma, we immediately became a member. Um, and so uh, I had my sights set on Jimmy and I, I couldn't quite convince my um leadership that, you know, to kind of let me go for eight days, because it is a little bit of, of a stretch. But um, when I did get back to North Carolina, I started working for a university based, I mean, all this was kind of new to me in terms of university based, small, rural, but still an American Indian Museum uh, field. And I felt like it was the perfect time to really go to Jimmy and sort of as a reboot, if you will, but also just to kind of join um, a cohort of people that might be in similar situations, small, rural, or uni university-based museums, or all of the above. Um, what I didn't expect was to find a museum family. And I would say within about three days, our entire cohort just gelled together so well, um, which made the learning and the workshops just exceptional. We would um, do our sessions and we didn't get as many breaks in the schedule <laughs> as there are now. So we kind of hung out, you know, the evenings afterwards or had dinner together and just kind of chewed over what we had, uh, all of the different presenters and the workshops. And it was incredible. And um, by the time we left, we became Team Tiger Blood because we were just committed and devoted and disciplined to kind of get through and everything we felt like you know we just were empowered to go back to our respective museums and continue and do great work with everything that we have learned we are still connected um to this day and i think that there were a lot of things that i learned about as a new director in terms of um fundraising was a big one of course uh staff management empowerment kind of a refresher on collections care and um, interpretation, but all of that was really important. And um, it really, I never wanted to leave. And that's what, and, you know, really um, kind of uh, both my, myself and, and Ellen LaFaro, who was in my cohort, what really pushed us to kind of a, a submit a proposal to be instructors is because it is such a great learning environment. Um, there's nothing else like it that I know of. And if if something's come along in the past couple of years, it's certainly a dupe of what Jimmy has been doing for 
a very long time. And so we just wanted to continue to be um, a part of Jimmy and everything it has to offer. Um, we certainly, I'm speaking for Ellen, believe in um, the power of, of kind of the goals of what Jimmy has set forward and uh, the opportunities that are afforded to the co cohort uh, that really get this exceptional opportunity to, to go to Jekyll Island and participate. So, you know, I don't think I would be exaggerating if I said it changed my life, but um, it definitely gave me a group of professional uh, friends, uh, folks that I would even consider family. And um, it's just been one of the best professional development things that I've done as part of my career um, and has just had a profound influence. So I can't speak highly enough of it. Of course, the scenery and the location uh, helps uh, the morning walks, um, the time to reflect, the walks on the beach are incredible. And it's just a chance of a lifetime. It really is incredible. So um, I encourage you know, everyone to apply. And um, I will say this, um, and I don't want to take away from, from Heather or Zinnia, but definitely if you don't get in the first time, keep applying um, and, until you get in. Don't give up on it because it certainly is is worth your your time. And, um, and I know that it's difficult with so many exceptional applicants. I know some people apply and they get in uh, if they don't get in the first time, they get in the next year or the following. So don't give up because it's totally worth it. Thank you, Nancy. Yeah. Um, so going back to our next question. So, you know, we've talked about eight days, a little bit of a stretch. Yeah. So I just kind of wanted to set the learning environment. And if, um, you know, it was like you're just stuck in that room all day, um, do you have a chance to check in with work, check in with family? Like, is there a balance of, um, you know, learning time and also being available to to your work and to your family? So just, you know, talk about, um, you know, how you were able to navigate doing both an eight day intensive program, but also being available to to your workplace or to your family. Uh, Scotty, do you want to start us off on that one? Sure. Sorry, Scotty, I think I muted you instead of myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, everyone where I worked knew that I would be gone and, you know, not as readily available um, as normal, but, you know, I, I did get a lot of uh, texts throughout every day, I think, uh, with questions. And, you know, I took some phone calls during our breaks, but, um, you know, it, it, it does, it is a demanding, um, program, but that's what makes it so good. And it's not like overly demanding at all. Um, and, you know, I didn't feel stuck in the room, um, you know, because everything kept me pretty engaged, you know, and never, my mind wasn't wandering or anything like that. And um, yeah, and in the evenings, you know, I was able to connect with family and um, I thought it was a, a fine balance, um, you know, and also something I wanted to say um, when Nancy wasn't, when she was gone and, you know, we, you were talking about an instructor perspective, I think that almost consider the instructors part of the cohort as well. I mean, they're not on the texts and things like that, but I mean, it wasn't like you were, you know, um, detached from the instructors, you know, you had lunch with them before or right after their session or, you know, um, talk to them, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, very casual, um, you know, and so I thought it was, you know, a really good um, environment to learn, a really good, um, you know, teaching um, setup. Everything was good. Great. Lisa, you want to take that question and then we'll we'll move on to other things? Sure. Um I think with knowing what your schedule is so well in advance, you can make whatever kind of arrangements you need to with your family or your team and say, okay, I'm going to have a break at 10. I'm going to have a break at three. If there's, you know, someone needs to um, get on there um, on their phone and, and talk to people. But um, Zinnia have the, the, the instructors are not tyrants. They're not going to say, no, no, sit down. You can't go and take a phone call. 
you know, because they know you have lives and other responsibilities. So um, people are respectful of your time and their cohort's time and, you know, not going to keep jumping up and taking calls. But um, if there's something that where you had to, you know, go outside of your break, then that's fine. And also in the evening, you can, um, you know, do whatever you need to do. So um, there was there was plenty of flexibility and that was not a stressful thing for me. So. Awesome. Great. Well, I know you've all talked about how it's affected your career path, um, but was there, does anybody want to answer, take this one, but like, was there anything you learned about yourself in this program that perhaps you just, you know, didn't realize um, going into the program? So this is for whoever wants to share, but like, was there just one unexpected thing that you learned that you wouldn't have um, otherwise? I think I realized I knew more than I thought I did. That was the big thing, you know, that um, uh, I was able to, from uh, what the different presenters were sharing or even in the um, kind of hands-on exercises that we were doing, um, kind of being just in a different environment and with the energy of, of the folks that I was with, I was like, you know what? I'm pretty good. I know many of us have talked about the confidence and different ways of forwarding our career or making a, a leap into another museum. But I remember that moment thinking, you know, being a new director and that was a little intimidating. Um, I thought, I am. I'm okay. This is really good. This has given me uh, kind of a process and exercises to go through to kind of test my skills and and I'm I'm all right. So that made me feel really good and um yeah and that was the big takeaway actually when i when we wrapped up this is kind of a funny one but um i you know i assumed i would be you know one of the older um members of the cohort when i was there but um i didn't you know i was taken aback by you know how smart um the younger <laughs> members of the cohort were like you know I learned so much even from from them you know looking at you Adrian <laughs> but yeah I mean um you know having you know there was a wide range of of um age age range there but yeah I mean I I just didn't expect that I guess um just not I wasn't necessarily surprised by it once I got there but it just wasn't something I had anticipated at all so yeah I think I, I was probably the oldest person in our cohort um so thanks for bringing that up Scotty but I think um people um as I said I'm very shy and I think one of the things that I wish I had done more of as to why I'm volunteering for a lot of these different things is, is to share my experiences and and be more vocal with what I know, what I can add to, to the learning experience for others. Because the learning from the cohort was as valuable to all of us um, as learning from the instructors. So, so just make sure you you know, have something to say and, and share some things. Lisa, do you feel like, because I know you were strictly HR finance or finance development or not development, but um, operational. So like, do you feel like after you left Jimmy, like you were able to, you know, be able to talk to curators and be able to talk to, you know, the different um, parts of, of the museum now that you had kind of gotten this um, sense of uh, what a museum and how a museum runs, did you feel more com confident talking to your colleagues? Definitely. Um, you know, when you're learning, if you know, if you, a lot of times you're just listening, if you don't feel like you have anything to offer, you don't know what people are talking about. But if, after you have a better understanding of what other people do and how they do it and how it all comes together, then you, you know, you can, um, have a seat at the table and and just be like, oh, okay, I know what they're talking about now. You're not just like just listening because you don't really know what you can what you can add. That's awesome. All right, so uh, just so we have time for questions, um, very quickly in just a, a few words, 
Um, Adrian, we'll start with you. If you could tell anyone um, why they should apply very quickly, what would you say? Oh gosh. Um, if if you're thinking that you might be interested, go ahead and apply and do it. Um, I don't think it's a professional like, development experience that you're going to regret. It's definitely one of the favorite programs that I've ever taken part in. Um, and I certainly can say I wouldn't be in the position in my career without it. Nancy? Same. Uh, I think I mentioned all of the important reasons to apply, but um, it is such a wonderful opportunity. I can't encourage you enough to apply. And um, I was just going to say, when you get there, just be present and enjoy it. Scotty? Yeah, same. I mean, if you're if you're here on this call, your decision's already made. Just apply. I mean, you're not no regrets, um, not even the thought of one. And I mean, I really am still thankful um, to SEMC and you know everyone for having the opportunity. And uh, the cohort um, is something you're not really going to get uh, in many other places. And yeah, I think. Uh, it's a, a, a very worthwhile uh, program. All right, and Lisa, we'll end with you and then we'll go into questions. Okay, I think um, one of the things that I enjoyed the most was um, optional evening sessions where in the hotel lobby, we would meet with some of the instructors, um, you know, on some of the nights and you can, these are people who are in the, the industry. They can give you real-time information, their resources, um, so, just having these people at your fingertips is a, a great idea. And um, I would never have gotten that without this program. I just, um, before we go into questions, I just wanted to say, first of all, thank you for all of you for sharing that. It's one thing to read the evaluations, but it's always more meaningful to hear you speak about your experiences, um, especially in this type of format. I just wanted to say a couple more words about the learning environment and the instructors. There are, there will be about 17 instructors. So it is a, a rotating um, daily, different people every single day. That being said, one of the things that we're adding in this year is a daily kind of introduction from the cohort to the instructors. And it won't be repeating who you are and what you do every single day, but we're it just different opportunities for the cohort members to continue to get to know more about each other, like Lisa was just saying, and then having, so each instructor has much more of a familiar, familiarity of who they are speaking to in the room. They will, of course, have, you know, the list and the, the titles and all of that of who's going to be there, but just we're, we're trying to start things off m more intentionally um, to, to get people talking to each other in a, a less formal way. Now, one of the things we have also tasked, challenged um, the instructors with is making the sessions interactive. So there are opportunities. I mean, you know, sitting all day long is and listening and just trying to absorb is difficult. Um, there's all kinds of different learning styles. And so, um, you know, we're trying to give opportunities to get up, to, to move around, to do little projects, to do group work, to go outside. So that has been, that will also um, be built in. I personally have to stand up a lot. Like I cannot sit in a chair for eight hours. So if you've ever been with me in a, one of these programs, you'll usually see me kind of standing over by the window at times, just listening still, but I got to stand up. I just, I get antsy. So my point on, on that is this program is designed for all different kinds of learning styles. Not every instructor is going to meet exactly how you learn, but there's such a variety that the information will be, will be conveyed in all kinds of different ways. And you will have all of the resources that they're providing you in that seed loop. Um, and so I just a couple more things. Um, this is, there is a cost to this program. Um, the tuition is $1,000 for that eight days. Um, the travel to and from and the hotel is on each applicant um, member. The hotel rate is $159 this year a night, 
We do offer opportunities to to sort of do a roommate matching. There are some people that each cohort have had people who have shared a room. Um, that being said, we also do offer some assistance for tuition scholarships for the Jekyll Island Management Institute. We can give um, at least two, I have to check the budget, um, tuition scholarships through the La Paglia Fund, which was set up many years ago to honor one of the Jimmy founders. Several of the state associations offer a scholarship to cover tuition um, for uh, an applicant who is selected from that state. And there's, you know, there will be more information forthcoming on that. But we do, if you want to go to this program, we want to find ways to help it work out financially. So I understand that cost is is often a barrier, but please don't discount it without coming and talking to me um, or Heather and seeing what we can be worked out. Um, we also do lunch, daily lunch is included. Uh, the breakfast is at the Hampton every morning. It's a decent breakfast, right, guys? It was all right. I mean, it's it's yeah. you know your comp, your classic Hampton Inn breakfast. Uh, it, breakfast. You liked it? Well, whatever is there. <laughs> Um, I'm a big person of snacks, so there's snacks all day long, and we have, there's three dinners that are included, at least three, yeah, two at the hotel, and then the final banquet dinner. So I know that that's, you know, a lot of information, but I just feel like we need to get that out there. We also do pay our instructors, which is why the, you know, the cost of doing everything these days is, is rising, and so we are also trying to be equitable with um, compensation of those who are giving their time to this program. So that's it. <laughs> okay. Does anybody have any any questions? Feel free to unmute and ask or um, ask in the chat. We're here to um, hopefully help you out. So any questions? I just wanted to say something if I can. Absolutely. My name is Bernard Potts, and I am the Director for Security and Operations at the Michael C. Carlos Museum. So I work very closely with Lisa Fields, basically on a weekly basis. And to be honest, I just wanted to jump on this meeting to just confirm my intentions to apply. And all of you have definitely done that for me. And when Lisa said that she was excited, I can completely confirm for her when she came back from this program, she was so energized and so excited when she returned to work. I mean, it was like this level of joy was on her after participating in this program. And it was very infectious for me. I have been thinking about Jimmy since 2023. <laughs> and I hope to have the honor of participating in 2025. But just to be in an environment of such openness and collaborations and, and learning is just an outstanding opportunity. And I'm certainly applying and I will continue to apply until uh, I'm given that honor to attend. Thank you, Bernard. That's awesome. And again, this is something, you know, if you feel like you're just in one spot and you, you, you know, haven't had much of experience in other parts of museum work, this is the perfect opportunity to learn all aspects. Um, we had a question from Diane. How many uh, how many applied for the program last time and how many spots are available? Sure, I can take that one. I think we had about 50 applications for the program in 2023 and we had 18 spots available that year. Um, you know, some of the, the cohort is based on space and, and what we can do in that um session room and this year i said we can take up to 20 in the cohort and the application again it's a pretty simple application process but it's really um the selection committee has a, a challenge ahead of them each year but it's really making the case for why you why you want to participate in this program and what you hope to get out of it um, there is, I think there's, we were asked for one letter from a supervisor or somebody else from your organization that confirms support of your participation in this program. I think that's important. Um, and so that's the short answer to that question. Right, Applications question. are open. Yep. Sorry. Go ahead. 
Oh, that's okay. And I'm going to uh, put the link in for the application and just know that they're due October 4th. So you don't want to miss that deadline. I'll put the application link in the chat. And this is a really good question. Um, one we can kind of wrap up on. Um, how is Jimmy, this program, how is it different from our leadership institute that was held this year? Sure, I can take that one. So Jekyll Island Management Institute is all about learning best practices in it a couple in every aspect of a museum operation. The Leadership Institute is much more about in your personal, it's it's more internal. It is about your personal leadership style. It is about how to support a staff, how to make outward facing, um, outward facing connections with communities, how to uplift a board. It's It's really much more about in the individual as opposed to the overall operation of a museum. That's the simplest way to, um, the, the two programs are sort of apples and oranges. One doesn't necessarily flow into the other. Um, most of the people who are in the Leadership Institute are at a stage of their career where they are looking for more executive level um, experience and or maybe they're new to running, they have a department of however many people and they really want to learn more about, um, it's about best self as a leader is, is another thing that we talk about a lot. So two very different programs um, designed, I would say the Jekyll Island Management Institute stage of career almost doesn't matter. It kind of depends on what you do and what you hope to gain out of the program and how you can use that knowledge um, to go back to your, your position and feel more confident um, and to really have a, a much better understanding of how your role fits into the larger wheel that makes the museum turn. Perfect. Okay, any other questions? I know we're kind of up against time now, but we appreciate you all for attending this program and we hope it will encourage you to um, take your next step and apply. Um, we will share the registration link. You'll see it um, posted on social media. It's on our website. So again, you know, don't miss that October 4th deadline. And if you have any questions, um, please feel free to reach out. Um, it's a pretty straightforward process, but we understand if you have questions about it and just reach out and we hope to see you on Jekyll Island in 2025. So we thank you. Bye everybody. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.